E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui de novo no DCS World, fazendo mais um vídeo do FA18C Hornet. É, os vídeos que eu vou postar baseado nessa introdução serão vídeos postados lá no canal do CEO Matt Egner, do pessoal do DCS. De vez em quando o Matt Egner faz uma postagem de vídeos do FA18 com atualizações do sistema. Da mesma forma, naquela sequência que eu estou falando, que eu estou fazendo como F16, né? Toda vez que o Matt Egner fizer uma atualização, eu vou postar vídeo baseada nessa introdução aqui. A introdução sempre será a mesma e os vídeos serão todos os vídeos do Matt Egner. Qualquer coisa aí na, na descrição tem o link do vídeo original. Falou? FA18C, atualizações. Valeu, obrigado. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F-18C Hornet video, we're taking a look at the trackball scan acquisition mode, uh, TWS, also called TWIZ, and this is a great mode for building situational awareness and attack, as well as being able to engage multiple targets at the same time. Let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at some of the very basics of trackball scan first. Uh, so first is how you select it. Uh, we'll see right now that we're in range while search mode, RWS, and to go to TWIZ, we'll simply select the same push button, and that uh, changes us to uh, track while scan TWIZ. Now, next, there's going to be a direct correlation between the bar you have selected and what azimuth settings you have available. So right now we're at 4 bar, and we have uh, azimuth settings for 40 degrees or 20 degrees. If we go to a 6 bar, it's only 20 degrees azimuth. And if we go to a two bar, we have 20 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, and 80 degrees. Let me go back to 20 again. So for now, let's keep it at a four bar. Uh, the next thing is uh, here we have our uh, TDC. And based on where the TDC is located, by slowing it, determines where the center of the asthma scan is located. So this allows us, to, if we have a more narrow scan, to focus just on one particular area on the attack radar display. Okay, next. Okay, so I have some targets ahead of me now. Let's take a look at how we can designate targets. So first, when you're in trackball scan mode, you have up to 10 filed targets, and that includes both the LNS, the uh, launch and steering, as well as the DT2, or designated target uh, two. And in addition to that, you have eight other file targets, which appear with the stems and also the ranking of one through eight. Uh, after that, you have up to 64 unfiled targets, which appears as uh, bricks, which are called hits. And those can actually be uh, disabled uh, seeing them with the hits button up here. And we'll see those in here in a little bit. Now, so right now we have an LNS, but we have no uh, DT2. And in that situation, we can use the undesignate button on the stick to cycle through the different uh, uh, file targets to be the LNS and it'll go in priority order. Now, in addition to cycling this way, we could put the TDC over one of the file targets, press the designate button on the TDC, and we make that our secondary, or DT2. And so now we have an LNS and a DT2, and if we want to swap those, we hit that undesignate button on the stick again, and we switch those. So if I want to make uh, priority one here, my DT2, I designate it and hit swap, and now that's my LNS. And also now at the bottom here, we see we have uh, uh, launch accessible regions or LARs at the bottom. We can see that LNS has hit max range now as well. Now, when we uh, have a target designated, we can also go to auto, and this will center the scan on that target. So let's say if I uh, go ahead and designate this target up here, make it DD2, swap, and now it's my LNS, and you can see the scan is now centered on that target. But if I were to take the TDC and designate a point uh, using the TDC and pressing designate uh, not on a file target, it goes in a biased mode, and now the scan is centered on that location. 
and you'll see that the uh, contacts outside of that sweep will gradually start to disappear. As you see there. Then also what we can do is we can put it into manual mode and just like we saw before, wherever you put the TDC, the center of the scan will then center on the TDC location. So let's go ahead and make uh, this one here, DD2, swap, LNS. We'll go to auto and now it's centered on that. And at any point we can hit the reset button and that will reset our uh, scan centering as well as our uh, primary target that the LNS is set to. And anytime you go into trackwall scan for the first time, it'll automatically set a LNS target. Okay, now let's take a look at missile engagement using this. Okay, so let's first do an AIM-120 shot. So I'm going to go ahead and select the AIM-120. We're in air-to-air -air master mode. And on the uh, radar display, we see we have uh, LNS indicated by the uh, star. And let's set the uh, one next to him as our DT2. We'll designate that. And now we see that we have uh, LARs, LARs for a launch acceptable regions, uh, one for the LNS and then one for the DT2. And up on the HUD, uh, the box indicates our launch and steering for the target on the left, and the X is our DT2 on the right. So at this point, let's go ahead and get our steering more aligned for our LNS target. And just to review, uh, here on the nerd circle, uh, the little line here is our current range to target. At the bottom, this um, uh, triangle is our R max. The triangle here is our uh, no escape range, and this is our minimum range. So we're going to wait for an R max shot. Okay, now we got to shoot. Fox so, three, and now I'll go ahead and swap my LNS with the DT two. And now you saw that the X in the box on the HUD flipped. So what I need to do now is make sure I keep my scan covering both targets at the same time. And that's close enough. So at this point now I'm guiding both missiles, and as long as I keep both targets with the within the azimuth of the sweep, it will provide the, uh, the data link uh, guidance to both of those targets for impact. And one down. And two down. So pretty simple. And there's no reason you can't do this for multiple targets at the same time. Just simply uh, cycling targets between LNS and DT2s. And as long as you keep you know, all the targets within the scan until the missile goes active, you can engage you know, quite a few targets at the same time if you wish. OK, now let's talk about using the AIM-7 in trackwall scan. So with the AIM-7, it's actually a bit different than using the AIM-20 because the AIM-20, you can engage targets while still in track while scan mode. But with the AIM-7, you're going to have to be in a single track target mode or an STT. So first, let's go ahead and select the uh, AIM-7. We see that we have a LNS target out there with the launch and steering information up on the HUD. And what's going to happen is when we get that shoot cue, we launch, launch the AIM-7, it'll automatically transition from a track while scan uh, track to an STT track. And we'll see that here in a second once the target hits uh, our max. And again, here on the radar, we have our max range up here. Okay, shoot. And missile away, and you can see it automatic transition to an STT. And up here we see we have uh, RTS, uh, track wall scan, where we turn to track wall scan if we need to. But if we do that now, it would actually break the STT, and the uh, missile would miss the target at that point.
and splash target. So you can see very simple to use the AIM-7 as well. Let's go uh, return track while scan and we're back. Uh, next, let's take a look at using the uh, scan RAID in the expand modes. So next we have a, uh, two different modes to allow you to kind of break out uh, closely flying aircraft. Uh, that's the scan RAID mode and the expand mode. So with the uh, RAID mode, we can go ahead and have an LS target and hit the uh, RAID push button to expand this to a 10 mile scope, which zooms in on the LNS or we can actually disable it, and then we can do the HOTAS function and select RAID and do the same thing. And this will center on the LNS target unless we switch it to a different target. We come back out, and the uh, expand mode works in a very, very similar manner. That it will center on the LNS, but keep sweeping in the area around it at a 20 degree scan area. And again, this is a very handy function to um, designate and attack uh, aircraft in close formation. And finally, let's take a look at data link. All right, so at this point now, we have an AWACS in the mission, which is acting as a donor for us. So we see we have an LNS. Let's go ahead and make this our DT2. So we have uh, 10 file targets, and we have a couple hits out there as well. Now, just as you may be familiar with the SA display and latent track will scan, uh, the top of the HAFU indicates what we see uh, as uh, unknown at this point, in the bottom half of the HAFU indicates what our donor sees, our AWACS in this case, which is classifying as hostile. But go ahead and put the TDC over our LNS here, and we do an IFF interrogation, it comes back uh, negative, and so this is, is classified as a hostile now. And we can do the same thing with the uh, DT2. And because we're in uh, manual uh, scan centering, let's go ahead and move it off to the right here. And what we'll see is the uh, contacts on the left will then transfer to donor-only surveillance tracks. Uh, first one just popped in. And as you can see now, the AWACS has taken over uh, the scan for those targets that our radar is no longer seeing. But if we go ahead and slew our radar back over these guys, then they'll start popping in again. So you can see that uh, using the uh, donor uh, system or the data link and track while scan can be uh, super useful as well. Anyhow, folks, I really hope you enjoyed this little video on TWIZ, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.